evening, everyone. We're here tonight for the public hearing on the school and library budgets for the 2012-2013 school year. Very brief um, items on the agenda here this evening. Um, I will just let you know for this is not a meeting, so it doesn't um, really follow the typical policies behind public comments at board meetings because this is not a meeting of the board. Um, it's merely a public hearing. So the plan for this evening is to have um, a lot, an hour for public comment on the budget and uh, five minutes for each speaker. So that's how we will be handling this this evening. Our first item on the agenda is the actual presentation of the budgets for the school and the Newburgh Free Library. So I'm going to move. So, 
given these figures, you had a budget number to come up to that must have, that must conform to the tax cap. This is what you decided at 2.63% tax increase. The preliminary budget, which is what I costed out under contractual obligations and next year's inflationary factors at 242.7 million. We raise about 5.3 million in local revenue. That represents the utility taxes, um, uh, tuition received, other, other items, federal um, Medicaid money. Uh, so it's everything that comes into the district that is not state aid or it's not taxes. You agreed to appropriate $2 million of the fund balance. Remember that $2 million was, again, the uh, past few years has been the same amount. The year that that gets taken away, $2 million additional taxes will have to be added to support the budget. So you try to maintain that $2 million each year by, by dipping into fund balance a little bit, and hopefully it's not depleted, as with most New York State schools, they're anticipating that it will be depleted, and over the next few years, some state schools will be bankrupt. You factor in the state aid figures we just went over, you back out the pre-K because it's federally funded, they include it in the state aid package, but we don't include it in our budget. We pay for that out of our grant sources with the general fund kicking in a minor uh, local share. The preliminary budget minus these three figures is the amount of taxes we have to raise to support the preliminary budget. Knowing the tax cap law at 2.63%, the max you can go up is 100 million point one. So there's a current budget gap of $14.2 million, and that's what you started to work with. The maximum budget you can have for this year under this tax cap law is $228,176,073. So there's a summary of these budget changes. Um, March 4th, which was just the day before you started working on your budget, um, was at $242.7 million. It would have resulted in a 17.23% tax impact. March 5th, you agreed to $7.2 million in changes, which brought it down, it would have been a 9.86% tax impact. On the following meeting, two weeks later, you changed, you went down 2.6 million to 232.9 million, which would have resulted in a 7.16% tax impact. The following week, March 22nd, you again decided on another 2.63. I had to check this three times because it was so close. But it's almost identical to what you decided on March 15th. Brought that down to a 4.45%, bringing it up to the final March 29th meeting of 1.77 deduct, 228 million to 2.63%. And I'll just remind you that at that same meeting, March 29th, is when you put back the additional 22 positions based on the additional aid from the governor's original proposal to the final budget that was enacted and adopted by this, uh, the Senate and the Assembly. Uh, the details of these changes can be found on the district website. I did hand out uh, tonight just the summary page. Um, you have a two-sided, the audience has a two-sided sheet, which shows the current budget, the proposed budget, and on the other side it does have a, a summary of what you worked on over the, over the course of the meeting. Changes in the FTEs, this is just a summary of those changes that were approved by consensus. On the first meeting, 83 and a half were um, slated to be eliminated, 40 and a half, the following meeting, three and a half, and then 19 combined added back positions brings to a total of 108 and a half positions. I've broken it down by components. The administrators, which include directors and principals, there are currently 48 um, principals and directors. They uh, are removing positions of four, which brings them down to an 8.33% reduction. The teachers um, have a 1,045 total units. They're losing 32 positions at 3%. The teaching assist assistants, which is technically part of the teacher's bargaining unit, had 156 uh, positions currently on the books, and they're slated to lose 28. The CSEA, which includes all of the support services, support staff, had 487. They're um, being reduced by 42 and a half. Central Office Administration, there's only nine administrators, losing one for an 11.11% .11 decrease, and Managerial Confidential, uh, which are your, um, your supervisors, um, those that are not governed by any other contract, they currently have 30 positions, they're going down one, and uh, a net 3.33% reduction. 
Down here I broke it down by bargaining unit. Administration total is going down by 8.77%. Teaching is going down by 5%. And support staff is going down 8.41%. Again, a detailed listing is, was handed out, but it also could be found on the website. The budget breakdown that's required by New York State is broken down into three components. The administrative component, which includes all nine classroom expenses associated with operating the schools in the district, and they include salaries, benefits, supplies, equipment, of district offices, school offices, as well as insurance council, PD, and other indirect uh, costs that deliver instruction. You have the program, which is the bulk of it, which includes all expenses directly related to delivering instruction, which includes, again, salaries, benefits, curriculum, uh, transportation, and classroom costs. And then you have the capital, uh, which includes all costs associated with operating your building. I say this because we're required to submit a three-part budget to the state if the budgets get defeated. It's uh, included on our property tax report card that was submitted, and it, it, this is very significant this year because there's a couple of reasons our contingency budget is a lot different than in the past. You'll note here I have the current budget, the proposed budget of 228. You have to back out the non-contingent items. In the past, this basically was equipment and the board always had as, as its discretion to decide what is contingent upon education and it was always left at the local level. This year's contingent laws state that whatever taxes you collect this year cannot be increased for next year. So I believe that number is just about a little over $97 million that we're collecting this year. That is the number that you can collect this year. So you actually work up instead of having your budget deduct and then reducing it by your aid, your local revenue, um, and then um, your appropriated fund balance to come up with your budget. This year, with the contingency budget, you work backwards. You start with your current tax number, add in your aid, add in what you can collect locally, add in your appropriated fund balance, and that becomes your budget. Now we know that that number is 2.568. That's the amount of additional taxes we're collecting that would have to come out of the budget. You break that up according to the percentage of your administrative percentage and then also after review of the current budget. So these items would come out of each of those component uh, budget pieces. 307,000 additional would come out of administration, 2.1 million would come out of the instructional piece, and 189,000 would come out of your capital piece. Again, just under the new tax cap laws, you cannot raise any taxes higher, there are no exemptions allowed. In the past, we used to allow for exemptions for judgments and claims against the district for certain enrollment growth which were not experienced. And, and um, a couple other exemptions. They are now taken away. The only thing that is considered is that your taxes do not increase. All other contingency rules would apply. That's with regards to your building and facilities use, you would have to charge dollar for dollar the exact cost. Local community members wouldn't have the luxury of using the buildings without absorbing all the costs. We give them now the nominal fee. We don't let your buildings out for the full cost because uh, of the relationships we like to maintain the community. You'd be prohibited from doing that. Now, before I go on to the library budget, do you have any board members questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna take you through the library real quick. Um, it proposes $103,229 increase in tax levy which is a 2.94% increase in the levy. Again, they have to apply to, they have to comply with the tax cap laws, but their rates are figured on their tax levy. And, and it's a 2.94% increase when you factor in the uh, formulas. So the levy goes from 3.8 million, 5.4 to 3.967 very nominal increase, maintains services and programs, doesn't add new positions. It also conforms to the newly enacted tax cap laws I've just explained. And it uses the fund balance to close the budget gap. Um, the library is in a luxury that the district is not and that their fund balance is healthier. And that they can absorb a little bit more, certainly not dealing with the same type of numbers, but the, the library can absorb that uh, difference. How long is yet to be seen based on how long this tax cap was in staying place. So if you look, uh, this is just a comparison of the current year versus next year. 
is only the library re uh, budget is only going up $126,000. Taxes, 113000 The interfund transfers, um, they'll be covering some of the costs of the general fund this year. In the past, the general fund was absorbing those costs, but now that we're trying to preserve jobs, we felt that the library should now start contributing uh, some indirect costs that they're receiving the services for. Everything else maintains uh, minor changes, uh, but again, it's a very modest budget for such a large area. And that concludes tonight's presentation. $568,550. And out of those cuts, $307,226 would have to come out of the administration. $2,072,022 would have to come out of the program portion of the budget. And $189,302 would have to come out of the capital portion of the budget. Is that correct? Yeah, these are my estimates. The board has the final determination of how much comes out of each component. But in looking through the budget, certainly we didn't address the, the, the contingency budget during our meeting because that was that will that's something that you kind of hope you don't have to go into. Correct. But you'll have to get into it if it gets defeated for the second time. If it gets defeated the first time, and then in June again when it's allowed to be put up, or if you choose to go right into contingency, you'd have to go through the budget and choose the non-contingent items as determined by you and the board. But for a combined total of Correct. an additional two million five hundred sixty-eight thousand five hundred fifty. That number will not change. Got it. Any other questions or comments from the board members? Basically, the last meeting I saw the school social workers get up and speak about something. And um, my sister works at a uh, school down in New York City that uh, is uh, for special ed students and things of that nature. And I start asking questions of her down there and about school social workers and psychologists and um, what they were saying about them getting reimbursed for uh, Medicaid and such, uh, that is true. And um, 
they can get back uh, one third of their salaries. And uh, I, I don't know why we're not doing something like that. Uh, excuse me. We addressed that at the last meeting. We okay. are getting reimbursed. The, oh, information, the information that you received at that last meeting was incorrect. Oh, it, there, was, there wasn't an answer given? Yes, there was. I, I Dr. Hear. Noriega gave the numbers of the money that has been brought back by our social workers and by our nurses. So that's a dead issue. I don't know why you're bringing that up tonight. I, I, because I did not hear an answer at that meeting and I was there to listen. I just, I didn't hear. I was listening. Okay. And, uh, and I, I think social workers are a very important part because I have been teaching here for 25 years and I've been, I see what an important role that they play with the students in the school district. And I, you know, I just, I love the, the fact that I can see that the students get a chance to talk to somebody and have a chance to be worked with. I have special ed classes that I have to deal with all the time. I, I can name five students every year that these students that have to be worked with with these people and I they do wonders with these students the fact that uh, all the special extra stuff that goes on and I'm sure it goes throughout the district not just the ones that I have to deal with and I just feel I felt for them last night when I'm the last meeting when I was watching that and when I didn't hear the answer, and after telling me that it was dealt with, I stand corrected. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Okay. Now, the other reason that I got up here tonight was this uh, budget came out last week, and I wish I had seen it much earlier, because I do have a lot of sisters, and they all have professional jobs, one of them being a CPA. I grew up with her, and she showed me how to go over these quite often. I saw so many things in here that we could be saving money on. One being, like, right off the bat, the fact that if you work at, look at your water bill, um, we're, you know, you're being charged for this building right here, a uh, higher water bill than you're being charged for a building right next door to you that is using more water than this one is. Mm -hmm. And that means you're getting ripped off somehow. So either you have your valve in this building is incorrect, or you could be saving thousands of dollars just on this building alone. Another thing I saw in here is your trash, your trash pickup is a mistake in here. Your trash, I, I, I check on the, the trash, the, the things outside your building, you have a $275,000 trash pickup that you're take you spending each year on, on your the school district. You could be saving thousands and thousands of dollars on those trash pickup. Your Chestnut Street bill is you're spending as much as you are in the schools, yet you don't have any school lunches over at that, that school. There's no reason for that to be paying that the same bill as you're paying on your schools. And then, of course, I saw that Mr. Fassell did a wonderful job cutting 20% across the board on tons of things, but he didn't do it for the school athletics things there. If he had done that for the equipment budget line, he would have got another $14,000 that it would have been wonderful that could have maybe possibly helped out the crew team or hockey team or the ski team, which are things that I would have loved to have helped out. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Kennedy. Eric Motley. Okay. Uh, Tucson Harold is going to take this place. Okay. Thank okay. you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, my name is Tucson Harold. 17 years old. And I'm currently a member of the crew team, but not just the crew team. But the crew team is not my first varsity sport. 
I'm also a member of both the basketball and football teams in the Newburgh School District. Um, I've only been on the mem I've only been a member of the crew team for three months. And I only wish to share some of what I've learned in that short period of time. The crew team consists of not only great coaches and students, um, but I've also learned how great the unity is on this team. I realize that each individual student not only worries about their own personal ambitions, but also has a great, sincere concern to help those around them. I'm very disappointed that this team is, has been put on the chopping block. By putting this team, you have uh, ended any chances that athletes had that may possibly be on the crew team. By forcing the students onto the Newburgh Rowing Club, they will be unable to get these scholarships. I think it's unfortunate that the team has been put through this, so much hardships over this short period of time. And I'd like to uh, make note that the crew team is willing to make any compromises necessary to keep the team alive. This team has made tremendous strides, such as winning sections, county and eastern New York championships, and over the years has done a lot of work to build up this team. Uh, Kennedy, Coach Kennedy alone has spent 25 years developing this team to what it is today. Um, I only hope that uh, you give the crew team a chance to um, raise any funds that they need in order to um, continue. And I'd also like to say thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. You did an excellent job, and I thank you for your input. It was truly appreciated. Thank you, young man. Teresa, okay, I want to put your last name first. <laughs> about the insurance premiums and the increase of 17.86%. Um, I would like to know if you could clarify, I would like if you could clarify for me, is there somebody in the district that shops around for lower premiums on a yearly basis? And, um, you know, by checking the New York State Insurance website, I noticed that the insurance plans that are offered to the district employees, namely MVP, New York State Empire Plan, CDPHP and GHI only increased their premiums this year about 13%. So can somebody please tell me where the difference of that 4.86% is and why the increase was so high? Especially when taxpayers are, you know, as taxpayers, but most of our jobs, we're paying for our <coughs> premiums at a higher rate on a regular basis. I would like to see that if that could be done, you know, I know, understand that you have union rules and contractual considerations. But I think as taxpayers, that's something that we need to see that the uh, members of the school district are also incurring some part of that premium increase, that it's not laying just on the taxpayers alone. That's my first concern. So if you want to wait to address it, because I have another concern. No, I'll address it now. Okay. Um, I did shop around. Okay. I did come up with a savings of over $2 million by switching uh, the insurance carrier, basically the same um, providers. The plans were a little different than what's offered by the New York plan, and the three bargaining units did not support the switch. Okay. It's, a, it's a condition of negotiation that must be negotiated, and we did bring them in, and we did discuss it, and they turned it down this year. Going forward, we're going to try to do it again. With regards to the HMOs, which you brought up, the GHI, the CDHP, the MVP, we stopped offering those programs unless they were the same price as the, the current plan. They only went up 13%, but their premiums were already higher than what we're currently offering under the New York plan. Okay. So what we forced the employees to do, that if they wanted to remain in that HMO, they had to pay the difference between that and the New York plan on top of the percentage that are required to contribute during the contract. 
Um, my other concern, uh, I was at the Board of Ed meeting for April, and um, there was discussion about the athletic teams taking a supply cut across the board. When you look at page 19 of the proposed budget, um, your 2012-13 versus your 2011-12, the only teams that seem to have suffered a cut were the teams that were cut. Your three teams, your hockey, ski, and crew. So can somebody please explain to me where that um, cut across the board happened because clearly 0% does not show a cut or a percentage. Yeah, the other teams lost assistant coaches and you'll see them in the, in the salaries line. And the coaches' stipends on page 21, 19? Yeah, there was a $67,000 decrease in the stipends. It was $121,000 total change. $67,000 in coaching stipends were gone with accompanying benefits that aren't shown under the athletic budget, that aren't shown under the benefits budget, under the nine, uh, the nine budget codes, the 9060, the 9030, 9040. Mm -hmm. Those accompanying benefits along with those 67,000 from the, the, the coaches from the teams that were eliminated along with the other five or six assistant coaches from other sports have been eliminated. With regards to certain equipment, you can't go down because of safety. Helmets need to be reconditioned, and this year actually all of our helmets for our football team have not passed uh, the safety and they're outdated, so we have to buy new uh, football helmets. So there's certain things that appear in these line item budgets that just by looking at them, unless you're dealing with them every day, it's difficult to understand them. But I appreciate some of the comments that are coming up, because it does force me to look at some of these issues. The supplies lines um, under athletics, again, was very difficult to go down because of certain items that are required to, to run that score. Well, well, can I just clarify, was, but did you not make the statement at the board of a meeting that you did cut supply lines for every athletic team? No, we cut from the athletic teams. We cut across the board on the, at the most athletic teams. Again, I'm gonna have to go back and look at this. But, uh, uh, Most, but that. not all. Um, there were some that couldn't because of the size of the teams that they were offered. You couldn't go down in, uh, we did go down one in swimming, but you still had to maintain an assistant. Um, there's certain requirements that are put on us by Section 9 that you need to have certain faculty there at games, uh, lacrosse being one of them. Uh, there's certain items, again, that come with restrictions. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mr. Leaf Stepakar? Madam President and Board of Education members, my name is Leaf Stepakar. I would like to thank you again for this time to speak in support of the NFA crew team. After a quick review of the budget presentation report for the coming year, I'd like to offer a few suggestions that can be made after the budget is successfully approved in the coming month for being helpful. Thank you. We appreciate that. As previously stated by the board, I'm going to repeat this, that other people have said it. The general supply lines have been cut for academic and administrative offices. However, the sports supplies have not been cut at all as compared to this year's budget. Total supply budget to all teams still stands at 62400 for the next year, even with the supplies for crew, skiing, and hockey eliminated. If all the supplies were cut by 20%, as was done for the academic and other parts of the district, then you would get an additional $12,000, probably $12,500, to be used towards the crew team. The travel costs for the debate team remain uncut at $40,000, which I think is very high for the next year. This is a debate team travel budget only and does not include the other costs related to this team. If this travel budget was cut by half, there'd be another $20,000 in support of maintaining the crew team. I work as an engineer and my company has eliminated all travel for meetings if you can do it online through Skype. So maybe that could be done by the district for debate. Debate can easily be done through Skype. 
That one, um, I do know I did speak to the director of that department who oversees debate, and he said that they are live only contests. They cannot be done by Skype. In Las Vegas and in Atlanta. There's no uh, debates that can be done in New York State? Okay. I hate to pick on other teams and clubs. However, the cuts to all budgets should be fair. The pain should be spread among all of the teams and not concentrated on teams like NFA crew. The crew members and parents are so dedicated to the team and the sport of crew that they would be able to maintain the team safely with the resulting $36,000 that would result from these other cuts, despite what would be a 22% cut from this year's budget. Can the other sports say the same thing? I'm wondering what kind of parent support you get from the other teams and how it's applied. Please keep this in mind after the vote and attempt to find additional savings that would allow the crew team to continue. It is a great sport at a great school. Before I finish, I have one more important comment. While I was reviewing the budget report for next year, there were a few numbers which I found to be very disturbing. While some costs have been kept in check by painful material and personnel cuts, others continue to rise at an alarming rate. In regards to salaries, there were a number of increases in different parts of the budget. These increases were basically offset by the loss of teaching, support, and administration positions across the district for a net increase of just 0.34%. So only 0.34% was an increase in salaries this year because of all of the cutbacks on positions. Benefits, however, have increased by over 20% in the coming year, or about $9 million. Of the total $9.5 million increase in the entire school budget for uh, of $228 million for next year, about 94% of that increase is due to retirement and medical costs of the school district employees. If we have the same level of increase on these line items next year, many additional positions will have to be cut to meet the state mandated budget cap. I therefore have to ask the question, when will we stop taking away the future of our children in order to pay for the living standards of our current generation? Something must be done to curb the drastic rise in medical and retirement costs that appear to have no end. Our generation needs to take a look at ourselves and understand what we are doing to our kids, both in Washington and in our own community. I understand there are contractual obligations, but this should be a strong line taken with both medical and retirement benefits for the school and the teachers. Thank you. Thank you. the benefits, the retirement, those factors are handed to us by New York State. They're governed by the state controller for the teacher retirement system and the employee's retirement system, and those factors are not negotiable. They're tied to the actual salaries that people earn. You see a large increase in the expense line-by-line -line item because over the past couple of years, the board has done budgeting by using a method called planned fund balance, where the retirement reserves that we've had uh, in place, along with the workers' comp reserves in place, um, offset the larger increase in the operating budget over the past couple of years. So, to try to explain it so that you would understand, this year's budget for those expenses are too low. The district, the board has determined to use fund balance to offset that difference. That fund balance is not there now. They did agree to use the one-time only chance to use the employees, um, um, the, um, excuse me, it's the uh, post-employment benefits reserve that we have set up that the governor has allowed unrestricted use for one year. We're going to deplete that full reserve this year, and again, we reduced all the workers' comp. If you notice in the budget, there's no Operating line for unemployment, which we know unemployment uh, expenses are going to be high. There's no line for workers' comp. And a couple other lines under the benefits has been reduced because we're going to use that $1 million uh, or so dollars or $2 million. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we're going to use that reserve. That was done for the current year on those lines for the retirement and the workers' comp. Next year, those reserves aren't there. That's why you see such a large increase on a line-by-line -line budget. So it's going to continue at that rate since there's no uh, funding left well, over. Well, I don't know what the rates are going to be from the state controller. I can't control what kind of rates they're going to put on these tiers. They did enact a new tier. They're going to start with a tier five, tier six, tier six, 
Your six for those employees not even starting work yet. Um, they'll come in with a different factor. Every tier that's one through four, one through five now, comes in with a different factor on the total wages that they earn. I don't control those. Those are run by actually Wall Street. Uh, the more money that the, the state controller makes under those investments, the less the, the factor is. What drives the number up dollar-wise is the total salaries. But once the total salaries go up, you're at a higher rate, you're going to see a larger dollar for dollar. Those, when those factors come down, they come down in preliminary form in sometime in December and January, which is why I always start panicking, because I never see them go down after I get that preliminary number. Those numbers, when I first started here in 1992, were up around 18%. They dipped down to just under 1%, and now they're going back up to 18% in the 20 or so years that I've been here. So there is no rhyme, I, I, can't, I can't project what that number is going to be. So I don't know what the next year's line item budget is going to be. I can only tell you that the reserves are depleting to, to, to a point where they might not be able to help offset a large factor that may be down. Anyone else wishing to speak at the public hearing? Please step to the podium and give your name and address. Please come to the podium and give your name and address. Um, I've lived in this area for 25 years, and although certainly there have been many uh, budget concerns before, um, this is the first time I felt they were so overwhelming that I, I felt the need to say something. Um, speaking for a lot of people who I, I know are in the district, who are parents and taxpayers and regular working people, um, we are absolutely appalled at the unreasonable proposal of cuts to the teaching assistants, the teacher's aides, and the other support staff. My kids were educated in this school system. Newburgh has an excellent, innovative staff that goes the extra mile. When we reduce the support staff in these classrooms, we all suffer. We hear that the support staff is being cut, and, and I think, who does this? You know, many of us have uh, known these support staff who've been at the with the district for years, and when they're cut, what do you think happens in the classrooms? Aside from the impact on the students, what about the teachers? A teacher who has uh, an aide or an assistant to help her, if they're not there, more stress, more sick time off, more subs, more money spent. And we realize that times are bad, but when these hardworking people are laid off, I believe that the entire community suffers. Anyone here who owns their own business, how much money are people going to spend when they're out of work? How can they continue to fund extracurricular activities? Uh, we talked about the Newburgh school sports being slashed. How are people going to have money to resuscitate those sports? You know, if people are laid off, they're on un unemployment that's covering their basics. And without activities, we know what happens to kids with idle time, nothing good. Do we look at the people I've talked before about how to save small amounts of money? Conferences, all these people going to conferences, all the uh, travel expenses for conferences. If the teachers are using their classroom time to discipline the student, the students, even the new best techniques they're learning, aren't going to be utilized. And you know, how many of the offices you go into that they have water coolers filled? I don't have a water cooler in my house. You know, or you know, lunch at conferences. Have them send a few trays from the cafeteria. Maybe, you know, I don't know, they'll save a few jobs and, and a few bucks. Um, the other thing is, who is in the district looking for the smaller ways of cutting jobs? Has any parent or support staff gotten a survey asking for ideas on other ways to save? Are there ven vendors? I know we need to use union vendors. Are there any vendors that are looked at to see if they're more cost-saving than the ones we have? Has anyone talked with other districts that have other similar student populations to share ideas? I, as a parent and as a taxpayer, have never been asked any of those questions. And I, I get that money doesn't grow on trees. I realize it's difficult for people to get by, even though you know, people like myself don't have kids in school. You know, but we all pay taxes. We pay taxes to keep the Medicare going, to keep the criminals in prison, the traffic lights you know, working. And I think we should also have the amount of school personnel adequate. So when we hear people say that it doesn't apply to me, why should I care? I think we should all care. Because I would say that the sum of the parts is still greater than the whole. 
This is our community. We all need to be asking you guys and our administration, you know, what are you going to do to make sure that the support staff is adequate and realistic and not just a formula on a spreadsheet or, you know, in some board room. And I really do hope everyone votes yes for the budget on the 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. My name is John Abrams. Um, my daughter's on crew, and I'm an insurance agent. So I'm looking at insurance. <laughs> and the biggest thing that really ticked me off was I'm seeing an insurance consultant fee of $31,044. I'm saying, saying to myself, if the insurance agent's working for the district and they're trying to save money, they're also getting an income by commission on all those policies. So why does there have to be a consultant also? It's just a very simple thing. It's $31,000. Insurance consultant's not for the health plan. It's for our liability and casualty insurance, which, uh, which governs all of our property, all of our students. They go out, they do ship, the, uh, they do shop the best insurance plans. They belong to our health and safety committees. I'm not aware they do not receive uh, profit off of them because they're a third party administrator of this. They are not the actual ones that. Why do, they have to, why do they have to be involved? The insurance agent that placed the business is the one that's going to save you the money. I do that every day. We, it, it's, it's a very tedious bid process that no one here has the expertise to put together a bid for all of those insurances with regards to the New York State insurance reciprocals. The requirements that are, are that are needed by each employee that are required by the state is no one here. I'm not has talking ever about health insurance. I'm just talking no, about property no. casualties. Yes, I know. And that property and casualty side is just out of control. We just don't. The numbers shop. are out of control. But we don't shop a vendor. We actually bid the insurance because of the New York State requirement for bidding. So someone has to write the bid. Someone has to review the bid on all the companies that bid on us. And no one here has that expertise. Each of those insurance agents should be able to be providing with this. That's that true. is similar and yes, absolutely should be. And that person should know what they're doing. If they don't know what they do, then they shouldn't be writing the business. They should be experts that are writing it. They can't rely on you know having to have a third party that we have to pay for. And when the insurance agent is making money doing that, it's not an insurance agent. Property casualty insurance, it is. That's what it is. And it's a big one. The other thing is when I'm looking at all the different items, they agree um, about the trash collection, the cost of trash, the cost of the electricity, the cost of utilities. Um, every time I've, I've gone into a, into a school, I've seen heat on when there's no one around. There's no controls. Those things have to be looked at. And those are things that are just thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of waste, you know? So when I heard crew was being cut for such a small amount of money, it just, it just floored me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abrams. going to speak, but I'm sort of inspired by Mr. Abrams because he's picking on his profession, I'm picking on my profession. I notice you have $250,000 allocated for your attorneys. Could someone tell me what that's for? <laughs> it's for everything that we do, just about. I don't know if you're aware of how many lawsuits a district our size gets every year. But it's quite extensive. Is that broken down somewhere? Yes, it is. Where can we find that? It's broken down on their bills. Who's bill? The attorney's bills. Who's the attorney? Uh, Sean. Uh, Sean Carlson. Yes. Yes. And what's the hourly rate? I don't have that. I 
can certainly give you all that information. I don't have that on the top of my head. So that would be about 100,000 hours? Well, if you're looking at 255 an hour. You don't know the hourly rate? No, I don't know it right now. I do know the hourly rate. I don't have the information right here I can get for you. Can we see the bills? Yeah. How many lawsuits are there? I don't know. The district clerk would have all the information. I tried to get that today. It wasn't there. You tried? I can't answer that. I was told it was missing. I put my name on it. Did you get it? You get what? I wasn't told of any. Information concerning the attorney's fees. Who, who did you give that to, that request to? I went to the library where I called the office and I was told to go to the library and get the minutes. Yeah, he spoke with, but that's not correct. Yeah, that's the retainer. Right, that's the attorney's retainer. Attorney retainer, right. Um, in addition to representing the district in lawsuits, um, they are at every board meeting and every board workshop. In addition to that, they are also at certain committees no, this is a public hearing. This is not a board meeting. So um, they are also at board of ed standing committees, such as policy, personnel, and some other things. So but we'd be happy to get you that information. We'll provide information. Yes, and the request is made through the board clerk, through the district clerk, Miss Mary Lou Botsford. So if you're looking for that type of information in the future, that's who you should be contacting. No, I know how to foil it. That you don't have to foil it, you just have to contact the clerk. I'm told that you do have to foil it. Sorry. So I do have to foil that information. But did you say that you would provide it without you asked the, the hourly rate. What's that? You asked for the hourly rate. Oh, no, I, I, I want to see the receipts. Then you have to foil that. I have to foil that. That's what I was just told. Yes. So that's a government record that you won't provide. Will it will be provided. You simply have to fill out a FOIL request. A Freedom of Information Law request to file. Okay. Yes. I'll do that. Yep. Can I get that before the vote? The budget vote? You can make because I understand, but if you, I am a lawyer, and if you don't give it to me, then I have to appeal it. She's going to give it Why to you with a, reason, to there's with a reasonable amount of time to prepare the, vote, the, the preparation of the, of the information that you're requesting. The vote is two weeks away. You can put the FOIL request in and you'll get the information. Same as we do with everyone else. Makes no difference whether you're a lawyer or not. I hope not. Well, I'm telling you it's not. Good. Just FOIL. Because, see all these kids out here? To me, they're worth more than those attorney's fees. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Thank you, Is there anyone else that would like to make public comment on the budget? Yes, please step to the podium, give your name, address. Um, I've been on the, I kind of just wrote something real quick, but I've been on the team, uh, the crew team. My name is Stephanie Schler, and I've been on the NFA crew team for the past three years. This being my fourth year on the team, though I have been around for the past six years, my life revolves around the crew. And frankly, it kind of hurts to see it being cut. Myself as a cheerleader, I do understand and am fully aware of the fact that other teams acquire certain things. As a student, I am worried about my future. I don't mean, um, with my life revolving around crew, I wonder if my future matters. As well as the other students in the district, we are all worried, yet striving to save the crew team every single day. With the cuts of crew, uh, with, the cuts, with the cuts of crew, myself, with many others, will or may be leaving the district because, not because we want to, but because we must in order to secure our futures. My family alone will be leaving the district if crew is cut. 
especially because crew is a big part of my life and I depend on it for college, as though do others on the crew team. I ask to please just put into consideration that crew may be saved and yes, I'm not good at speaking, but this is how much I love crew. You're doing a great um, job. I just, you know, I'm, it's hard to see, I don't know how to explain it, it's hard to see crew go because it is very important to a lot of people and it has been in the past. It has a history and, you know, we're still striving to fix it, to fix the fact that crew is in, may not be part of NFA next year. And it is really hard to see it go. So, sorry if I wasted you guys' time, but I- You're never you. a waste of time. Don't ever apologize you know, for speaking. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I- you know, like I said, I'm a cheerleader and I understand how hard this is for you guys and you know, the people, you know, we, we care about the sport and we're trying, some people may be angered about it, but I'm, you know, I really do care about the sport and tons of other kids do, you know. The students care. They care about what happens, even if they're not a part of the sport, and that goes for everything. I understand cuts should be made. But well, please think wisely because no one wants to get hurt. Like I said, you know, I love I love NFA. You know, heritage I inherited. I wanted wanted to go to NFA, and it hurts to know that my future. You know, I feel like sometimes my future will be able. It won't be an NFA if crew is cut, and it's probably the same for so many other kids with hockey and ski and any of the things that might get cut or might get you know rearranged with everything you guys have to do. Sorry about that. But. I figured I'd come up here and say it. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Stolero. You did a great job, and I know how hard it is to get up and speak publicly like that, especially when you're not used to it. But it's important for all of us to hear input, especially from our students, and how they're affected by decisions that we make. So I thank you for having the courage to get up there and speak. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to make a comment? Hi, my name is Charles Seven. Um, I'm on the crew and I started in seventh grade as a novice and slowly worked my way up the competitive and friend scale. On the friend scale, I worked up and I love all the boys and girls on this team. And no matter what happens, we work as one team and one unit, no matter what drama comes in between. By cutting crew, you'd be cutting a well-loved and majorly enjoyed family member of the Newburgh School District. We are fighting to stay by winning most of our meets and we'll miss most of the crew team. And we'll be very sad if you kick us out. I was a varsity diver and the only varsity diver on my team, so I know what it's like to be alone. But in crew, none of us feel that. We are all together no matter what happens, and I will be very sincerely sad if you cut my team.
twice your age, just off of that. But I worked my years over that, even with a boat that I now consider a family. We are almost losing what we have for next year, which is, which is our chance of winning a almost a national title, our only shot at it. It's a hard fact to see that we lose this team. We will lose whatever we, you know, we worked for. I worked since my seventh grade year, coming down my summer, fall, and winter seasons. After that, me and my friends realized that not only crew can help, but I joined the swim team as well my uh, sophomore year. I've been swimming for two years and have seen so much of an improvement out of that. We now hold like a lightweight time. I now hold like the third place time for the lightweights in my section right now. So, I mean, it's a big deal for me and crew. But not only that, just everything, all the sports. Kids from different teams come out for this sport, not only in general, like we had Tucson, and we also had other kids from the basketball, football team, and they come out and stay and love it. And they see the things that they enjoy out of this sport altogether. <coughs> Everyone in family, there are just a variety of sports on this team. It's not just one team that they're looking at, you're looking at every team on that sport. There's probably the most kids on that team that you'll see come together and actually be friends. And even at a crew, they'll be the best of friends together, no matter what. It's like a big family altogether. As a senior member of the team, too, it's just hard to say. I won't ever get to experience what I've seen so many seniors leave this team have, and that's a chance to experience a senior year. I'm gonna have to leave this year unknowing what it's like to have that feeling of going out with a bang. So I just practice all my life to see that it just goes this year instead of seeing it all the way through. That's Senior fair. row, correct? If I remember correctly. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, I recently started crew a few months ago, and I didn't really know anybody. But now, I feel like I've been accepted into a family outside of my own. And I'm really upset to see us not being able to be a family anymore next year. Yeah, we'll still see each other in school, but it would be nice to see each other outside of school doing something um, together, and um, I've learned from crew that a team needs to come together so that they can achieve something. Um, Sunday, while we were at Bayshore, um, our novice team beat one of the other teams, we came in second place. And we had never done that before, and that felt really good for me. And I know that the seven other people, including the Coxie in that boat, were very proud of each other. And um, it's a very, uh, we, we don't only think about ourselves. We congratulate other teams. We say, you know, good job. You guys were great, you know, and we won't be able to, I don't know how to say it, but um, please do think about making some cuts to all of the teams instead of just cutting the three teams that you are cutting this year. Thank you. I've been involved with rowing for three years, and this is my second year on the NFA team. 
Even though this seems like a short amount of time, this sport has most definitely become and changed my life. When I'm not a practitioner at school, I'm often down in the boathouse helping out or doing coin drops or selling candy. That's what sets us aside. We are a dedicated family. Whether you are in seventh grade or a senior saying goodbye, we all support each other and push each other to strive. The thought of not having that support system behind me truly kills me inside. Not only is the crew a huge support system, but is also a great motivator. The students on the team are pushed to do better in school to stay on the team and participate. So please reconsider the cut of the great NFA crew team, not only for my sake, but for the sake of the other students on the team. I would do anything just to be down there and just 
you know, we are down there just doing anything, and I know that's how the whole team is. And yeah, sorry, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's just really devastating to know that it is on the, the chopping block, and I just really appreciate it. If you could just maybe reconsider your decision, and yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Close kid coming up here, students, teachers, faculty. I'm actually reading that sign up there, it says better serve. Those cuts that I see there for teachers, assistants, and teachers really is not going to do them any justice. Um, we came up to the suburbs to get away from the New York City school system, and we came up here, we chose Vales Gate, which is a great school, labs, teachers, assistants, a lot of one on one interaction, which he loves computer labs, science labs. And when I heard that there might be some cuts that actually affected his school personally, I thought, well, you know what, this is my first time here. I've got to hear what the board has to say, maybe give you just a couple seconds of my thoughts. The schools really need every support staff they have now to better serve as you have on the sign back there if you want a brighter future. Um, we chose Valesgate, we chose Newberry School, school District, because it was a great school. Um, so just just keep that in mind. I mean, he's seven years old, and I see these kids here that clearly enjoy an FA. He's looking forward to, you know, just moving on. Um, and I want to see him as one of these kids, you know, who would clearly have learned a lot, not only from crew, clearly, but just the schools. So don't, don't, don't cut that many, or at all, you know. I think they all are doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm uh, Christian Mobiardo. And I'm not even on NFT crew, but I love all the people who are on there, and I just can't see, I can't think of um, all of them going and not seeing them again. It just, I don't even understand all the stuff that was up on the screen. I just know it's going to be cut and feel upset. Anyway. Please think about um, saving crew, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> So anyone else that would like to make a comment? You know what, I'm going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry because it's about crew. My name is Barbara Sussman. I wasn't going to say anything. My son used to be on crew, Don, and with your kids. All I want to say is if money comes back in the budget, and, and I know you have to consider the teacher's aides and the teacher's assistants, and I have a grandson that's going to start kindergarten, and I definitely want to see that because he doesn't stop for a minute. I feel bad for the teacher. <laughs> my thing about crew that I just wanted to say is my kids, I have three kids, they've played every sport you could possibly imagine. Right now, my son just got back from Sweet 16s for rugby, and I hate it. <laughs> the thing about crew, he did it for, uh, he didn't really fit in to some of the other sports, 
so well. Um, and uh, I suggested he try something, he tried crew, and he fit right in. And in spite of Ed, who can drive me crazy sometimes, and get me down to do some of the things, I'm sorry. I want to tell you something about crew. There's not a sport in the district that can get, that forces a kid to act as a team like crew does. They can't get the boat in the water. They can't get the boat out of the, out of the boathouse without working as a team. And these kids that never worked as a team before are coming together. These kids that don't have anything to do with each other because they didn't know each other from not having neighborhood schools. They don't know each other from other buildings. And I was a disadvantage because my kids actually were a disadvantage because we came from Long Island in a neighborhood school. This was, this was bizarre for me. They didn't know the, any of the kids. They went to crew. And let me tell you, the doors that opened up for him and the kids he met, and he wasn't, an, wasn't so much of an athlete, and he went there. And he loved it, and he had to stop rowing. And it was a really hard decision on him. He tore his ACL, and it was extremely hard on his team. And I want to tell you, that kid agonized over leaving that team. And um, Ed was such a great support. I have to say, when Jason was rehabbing his knee, he would find anything for that kid to do. And he could find anything for anyone to do, but he really <laughs> made that kid. He really made him feel like he was part of the team. He was devastated. He, was, he had to sit out for a whole season. But he found anything that he could get that kid to do, he had him do it. He had him coxie, and all you guys that row, you know what a 200 pound coxie does for you? <laughs> <laughs> they, when they heard he was gonna be the coxie, they all, they all wanted to jump in the water. <laughs> but anyway, not to, not to feed a dead horse or anything like that, I just wanna say that out of every sport, my kids have been on the football team, the baseball team, the lacrosse team, the softball team. I think we've done just about everything but soccer, and my older daughter did that on Long Island. Um, crew was the thing I think my kids got the most out of. And just that, that's all. Just saying sorry. <laughs> we still use the steps your son made for us. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that they want to say. 
say. I also have to put out there that the parents of the crew team itself are almost just as involved as just the crew members themselves. Alone, my mom has just as the president of the crew team. She basically does, well, I don't even know myself, but. <laughs> <laughs> she does a lot. <laughs> but she definitely sticks up for me most of the time. And that's what the main thing is. She always looks out for me. When they, my whole family heard the crew team was going to be cut, the first, they were devastated for me. Or almost as devastated, devastated as I was. They, the first thing they thought of was like, what are you going to do now? And I was like, I, I don't even know at this point. Sure, there's the rowing club itself, but that's not, that's not the same feeling you're going to get as you are in the varsity <coughs> sport itself. You're not going to go out there and have that same feeling like, I'm doing this for my school. You're only going to go out there and be like, I'm doing this for my team. But you are going to be doing it for your team as well, but you want that extra feeling. Like you're doing something that'll help out the rest of your team, give your give your school a good name behind itself. And that's I think for, on my behalf what this team has been doing. Everyone here, even half the people that I never even met myself have come up here and showed their support to the NFA crew team. And I can just speak for all of them and for all of us here that crew shouldn't be cut at all. Everything that we've worked for, I've worked for myself. And just as much everyone else, even. We spend most of our days, and basically, I could say 50% of my life has been at that group. Basically, boat house wise. Fixing, you know, repair wise on the boats, rowing, and just being with everyone. So, even actually, Mrs. Rash's son, Colin, was on the team when I was on the team. He was the first guy to actually push me. To push myself in order to get me to be a good rower in life. You have people standing behind you on the ergs, pushing you and getting yourself going on these ergs. No matter how hard and how much pain you're, you're going through, you just push through <coughs> to find out what you have to do. And just like everyone else's kids on this, that were on the team, I know, I know everyone's kids has one time or another been on the screw team that I just found out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murray. I've got one more minute before I need to adjourn this meeting. So is there any last speakers? and value your input. At this time, I will adjourn the public hearing on the school and library bill. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you to the community members to come out.